seen hand will take care of us all the way. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're glad you're here. Always glad to have Brother Blackstock with us over here. 
And uh, proud to run into people like that. He told me he prayed for me every day. Amen. I sure do need it. Yes, I like to see people spread. <laughs> and uh, so we appreciate the, all of you being here tonight. I'm going to preach from our Sunday school lesson. Y'all know where to turn, don't you? You should be tell you. I reckon you keep up. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. And uh, I'm not going to really preach from the lesson. I'm going to talk to one, about one verse in the lesson. Fine, fine. I'm going to get my Bible open here. Acts chapter 4. Amen. Got those on this. Lay it out here if I read out of this little Bible here. Acts chapter 4. When Perry was teaching this morning, and as he read this verse, I don't think he said very much about this, a few things, but as he read this verse, it just, uh, uh, something about it just kind of got a hold of my heart, and uh, I don't think I've ever tried to preach on something. Anybody taught in Sunday school the same day, but uh, I'm not going to say nothing probably he said much. And uh, But I just want to say this, say a few words about this. I'm going to read several verses, but then just one verse. I'm going to say something about here. Acts 4, you found a play? And uh, I'm going to read verse 23. Start reading the verse 23. It said, and being, and, uh, being let go, they went through the end of the company and reported to all the chief priests and the elders said, and said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God which had made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that in them is. Who by the mouth of the servant David hath said, Why do the heathens raise and the people imagine vain things? Kings of the earth stood up, and rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child, whom thou hast anointed, hath both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, people of Israel, were gathered together, for to do whatsoever thy hand, thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant thy servant that uh, with all bold uh, they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. Verse 31, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with bowls. That's the verse I want to talk to you about, verse 31. And when they prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with bowls. The four little words I want to talk about in that verse, the Lord will help me a few minutes, that we find right there in that one verse. And uh, first of all, there's a word prayer. And I want to say something about that. Now, let me say the early church, we understand the early church, uh, they was real busy for God. They're excited about what they're doing for the Lord. And uh, they were sounded out. And uh, they were uh, uh, shouting for God in the, in the early church age. And uh, many things could be said about that. And they was uh, letting their light shine. I mentioned a little bit about that this morning. Thank God they were steadfast. They was unmovable. Yes. And there was a reason for that. And uh, the words I want to say is something about in this verse here. I think that's the main reason why that uh, things was happening like they was in uh, that church. First of all, the Bible said when they had prayed. We'll talk a little bit about that word prayer. Prayer really does work. It always has and it always will. We sang the song, Prayer Bells of Heaven. Beats a man-made law and it does any day. Amen. Jesus said that men ought always to pray and not to think. 
Paul said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere lifting up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. Jesus said, when you pray, enter the closet and shut the door and pray to the Father that sitteth in secret yep. and said, he will reward thee openly. Right. We need some closet praying today. And many, many things can be said about prayer, and I won't take up too much time. I don't want, I won't, I'll try not to worry you. But I want to say tonight, we need to pray with confidence when we pray. Yep. We need not to approach the throne of God in prayer and wonder if God is going to help us. Right. We need to approach with the idea that God will help us. He can help us. He wants to help us. Amen. And so uh, we need to pray with confidence in the Lord. The Bible said this is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know we have the petition that we desire of him. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so uh, one day after a while, our faith is going to end in sight. But until it does, we must have faith in God. Yes. If we're going to get a prayer answer, we must believe God will do what he said he'd do. Yep. Hey, I'm proud that he will. Yes, sir. He said in one place, if you abide in me, my words abide you, ask what you will, it shall be done unto you. But not only do we need to pray with confidence, we need to pray with compassion. Burden upon our heart. And I've said so many times this that there, what's wrong with our praying? We got too many cold hearts and dry eyes when we make our prayer request. And I'm convinced that's right. But I tell you, we need to get under the burden of the Lord and pray to God, believe God's going to do something for us, thank God, in these last days. Now, the Bible said, I believe it's in you, but you will love building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the kind of praying we need. But we need to have that compassion and that brokenness in our heart and our life. Jeremiah said, oh, that my head were water. Mine eyes are found the tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people Israel. David said, all night long, make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with tears. Tears will move the heart of God. Yep. They that sow in tears shall repent in joy. And he that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seeds, and now let's come again rejoicing. I'm going to preach on prayer, although if I don't hurry up. But we need to pray, not only, but we need to pray with, we need to pray with consistency when we pray. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Did you know the Bible said to pray without ceasing? Yes. I don't mean you pray 24 hours a day. It'd be hard if, you, if you could do that, it'd be good, I guess. But it means, to, I know some people, they, in years past, that I've known down through life, and uh, they pray a little while, while uh, it, during the summer months, when they have, uh, uh, you, most of y'all don't remember, when they had, had revival. You couldn't have revival no time but in August or Jul July, August. Who ever heard tell I had a revival in cold weather in the wintertime? They didn't do that back in them days. His attractive meetings, they called them. And every church had their week set. Everyone had the week set. And sometimes people come in, get kind of fired up and revived in August, and, and they'd pray a while, but in three months you couldn't find them with a search warrant. Well, it ain't changed, it ain't changed a whole lot from that till today. Some people still like that. <laughs> but I'm just telling you. That's, that's what it's talking about. When it said pray without ceasing, it don't mean around the clock 24 hours. It means to pray with consistency and stay with it. When you feel good, you feel bad, you got time, you don't have time, you're sick, you're well, 
whatever's going on in the valley, you're on the mountaintop, pray anyway, amen. Pray, 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 pray. Right. It'll get the job done. And then we need to pray with courage. Courage, courage. Sometimes we just about lose all our courage. But I got to go on. I can't preach her all night. But I want to say something else. The another word that the Bible said when they had prayed, when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And uh, the place was shaken. And so uh, we need a shaking in our day. We're too calm in our church. Did you know that? I mean, uh, I mean, we just uh, said like a, Everybody don't, but some people come to church, you'd think this is a funeral. You're supposed to set up nice and straight and everything when you're at a funeral and when you're in a big crowd like that. But when you come to church, you come to worship, amen. amen. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with lifting your head and praising God. Ain't nothing wrong with saying amen. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting a little every once in a while and praising God when the Lord moves in our midst. I'll tell you, we need to shake it in our churches. And the Bible said the place was shaken. Thank God for this symbol again. Lord, have mercy. We need a shaking today. I got to think about that while he's teaching Sunday school. We need need to get shook up sometimes. <laughs> some people won't some people won't pay no attention until they get shook up. They won't pay no attention to what you're saying. They get half mad at you and listen to you. <laughs> Peter said, I think it me as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. The second epistle of love I'm now writing to you, which both I stir the pure mind by way of remembrance. Oh, God help us to get stirred up. Thank God for that shaking. In Acts, the same book we're preaching out of, chapter 16, they had a shaking. Over in Acts chapter 16, they put Paul, Silas, and the preachers in jail. And the Bible said they prayed and sang praises unto God at midnight. The prisoners heard them, and God heard them, and God sent an earthquake down there and shook the foundation of that prison, thank God. The Bible said their bands fell off and was loose, and they started to leave, and the jailer started to kill himself. But I tell you, all they was doing having revival, and they had revival. Fellowship meeting and a baptizing when it's all over. Hey. Just shaking up, they got shook up. And I'll tell you, we need to shake up. Oh, let me tell you this. I'll hear, I'll, I'll, I'll try and hold it on. But I think about that shaking. I thought about Ezekiel. The Lord carried Ezekiel over there and set him down in the middle, middle of a valley full of dry bones. And the Bible said that's very dry. And, uh, the Lord said to Ezekiel, said, Son of man, said, can these bones live again? He said, Lord God, thou knowest. You go on, no, Lord. I don't know whether they live again or not. He said, prophesy to these bones. So he started preaching to them. And the Bible said there was a noise and said then there was a shaking. Hallelujah. They're not going to be no shaking until they're a little noise before shaking. We got to get kind of stirred up a little. Yes. They're going to be a shaking. And there's a shaking. The Bible said bone came to bone, and and they stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. You say, can God do that? He done it that time. God can do anything He wants to do. Amen. Right. But I tell you, when they had prayed, they prayed. They got in touch with God, and the Bible said, uh, then uh, thank God there's a shaking. God shut that place. And then uh, it said, uh, there's all filled. There's all filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. They prayed. Amen. They got shook up and, and got filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, that's what we need. Yeah. Yes, we need filled up. The Bible said, uh, be not drunk with wine, words success, but said uh, success, but said be filled with the Spirit. Thank God. 
speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to get filled up with the Holy Ghost. We understand there's one baptism but many fillings. And if this is the only verse in, the, in Acts about it, then we, we know it'd be so. But there's different places in Acts found out where the apostle is full. That's filled up with the Holy Ghost. That's filled with the Holy Ghost. That's filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, there's one baptism. For by one spirit, all baptized in one bottle, where be your Gentile bond and free, have been all made to drink of one spirit. That's when you get saved, when you're baptized in the body of Christ. But then thank God, you, because you're filled with the Spirit today, that don't mean next Sunday you'll be filled with the Spirit. You're right. yes, I hope you're you'll right. understand what I'm trying to say. I hope you'll listen to me. It don't mean that. It means there's different filling, and God help us in our church. We need filled up with the things of God. The Bible said that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, that's the first thing we need to be filled with the Spirit. But that's not the only thing. We need to be filled with the Spirit. We need to be filled with love. Yep. We need to be filled with wisdom. We need to be filled with joy. We need to be filled with courage. We need to be filled with good work. We just need to be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me mention that last word. I think I got them right. Let me see if I got it right. Yeah. And when they had prayed, first thing, the place was shaken. Second thing, where they assembled again. Third thing, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then the last thing, and they spake the word of God with boldness. They want nothing to give you boldness like being filled up with God. I'm a coward. I, n I never did fight in my life. I'm afraid to fight, afraid somebody hurt me. I'm, I mean, I've never, I've never fooled nothing like that in my life. But when God gets on me and I get filled up with the Holy Ghost, I'm not afraid of a giant. I ain't Amen. afraid of, I don't care who's here. I don't, I don't care if the governor's here or the president's here. And I get to preach and it just don't make no difference. Everybody looks alike to me when I get to preach. And so, they want nothing. Give us boldness. Like being filled up with God. Hallelujah. Right. And that's what we need. We're too cared sometimes on the job. We're afraid to try this. Afraid to try that. Afraid it won't work. Afraid God won't help us. May God help us and give us a little boldness in our soul that we'll stand on our two feet and fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. In these last days. Boldness. Yes, sir. Boldness. Boldness. They prayed for boldness. Verse 2, 4, eight, said, give thy servant great boldness. Right before the text verse. And uh, so we need that boldness. Now think about boldness. I, th I think about a lot of people in the Bible think about boldness. But I think about how bold Elijah was. And he had prayed and God shut up heaven, didn't rain for three years and a half. He prayed again, the heavens gave rain. And uh, he went and faced Ahab and stood before the wicked king before Ahab. And he probably couldn't have done that till he prayed and shut up heaven and then prayed and the Lord sent rain again. But thank God when he got filled up with the good things of God, he wasn't afraid of Ahab or nobody else. He just went to it. He, I mean, he gave him a bonus. He prayed when he prayed. God give him boldness to think about Daniel. And when they throw him in the lion's den. Did you know, I looked for a scene, I didn't find it, but I know it's in Proverbs. It's the first verse in Proverbs somewhere. I, don't, I didn't find the chapter. I was in a hurry, but I didn't find the chapter. But I do know what the Bible says there. It said, The wicked fleeth when no man pursueth. But the righteous is as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. And we need some of that kind of boldness in our churches, in our everyday life today. We need that kind of boldness. Amen. Hey. We won't be afraid. But we'll have boldness. But Daniel had so much. I thought about that verse when I thought about Daniel. He had boldness and he wasn't afraid to go to the lion's den. 
He'd been praying three times a day, every day, and everything was just all right with him when he went to that lion's den. And Peter, I think he did say, talk about this this morning, but all of you wasn't out here. But the Lord gave Peter that boldness. Just the next chapter down, when Ananias Sapphire, you know how they tried to cheat and they lied and the Lord killed them. And, and, uh, but the uh, uh, Lord gave Peter boldness to stand up like a man and tell him what the Lord said about it. In fact, he said a few verses over, said we ought to obey God rather than man. So I want to say one more time, nothing to give us boldness like being filled up with God and the things of God. So in this verse, it said, would they pray? Pray, pray. Now, nothing much is going to happen until we pray. That's the first step. I just want you to remember that. That's the first step. When they'd prayed, the place was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And then they all spake the Word of God with bold. I believe these four things we need in our life and in our churches today. Father in heaven, I want to thank for letting us be here this evening. And uh, thank you for the Word of God. I know it's forever settled in heaven. And I sure do appreciate you letting us come back to church again this evening, worship and enjoy the fellowship with the saints of God, and good saying, everything. Just thank you for this day. It's been a good day to live for the Lord. Always a good day to live for the Lord. And I sure do thank you for blessing us church, upon the church and what you've done for us, what you're doing for us now. Pray you continue to bless. Bless everybody in this building tonight. Oh, God, I trust I've said something. There'll kind of be a child in somebody. At least think about it. Think about praying a little more. And uh, pray and stay with God to kind of shake us up and, and uh, fill us with the good things of God and put boldness in our soul that we'll stand for God, the Bible, the old-time religion, what's right. Thank you again now, Lord, for the blessings of this day and all the good things of life. Pray for this community that needs God. There's so many, so many around us that's lost. I know the fields are so white now, ready to harvest. And the real true labors are few. I pray you'll send more labors in, oh God. Please, please send more labors in for the glory of God. May we be the light and the witness that we should be in this community and wherever we go for the Lord. Bless other churches, other revivals, people that's gathered everywhere. We all need God. We're laborers together with God. Help us to always remember that. Try to be faithful in laboring together. And we'll love you and thank you for what you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, it's time to